गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन यस वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग शेल वी बिगिन द सेशन Today's topic is advanced SQL. In the last class, we have finished with the normal SQL, that is the beginning, or we can say the intermediate SQL. First, we have studied about the base, then intermediate. Now, today's topic is or today's part is advanced SQL. So that provides our detailed coverage of the basic structure of the network or basic structure of the SQL. And this, we are covering some of the more advanced feature of the SQL also that it addresses how to access the SQL from a general purpose programming language, why it is very important or which is very important for building the application that uses a database to store and retrieve the data. And we also describe how the procedural code or code can be executed within a database, either by extending the SQL language to support the procedural action or also allowing the functions defined in the procedural languages to be executed within the database. How it is formed? why it is formed, why it is so required. So we describe the triggers which can be used to specify the actions that are carried out automatically on a certain events such as insertion, deletion or updates of tuple in a specified relation. So we discuss uh, various triggers queries and advanced aggregation feature that is supported by the SQL and we also uh, describe the online analytical processing that is the OLAP in this that supports interactive analysis of very large data sets. So first part is how to access the SQL from programming language. That is how to use the PLSQL in the advanced Excel or SQL. Or what is the meaning of PLSQL? That is a programming SQL that provides a feature that we can use the programming fundamental. We can use the programming constructs within the SQL. So writing the queries in SQL is very much easier than coding the same queries in a general purpose programming. However, when we are using the database uh, query, when we are using the database programmer that also use the database schemas, that is also benefited for the general purpose programming languages. From a programming language, accessing MATLAB use the SQL for the, from the programming language. So SQL provides the powerful declarative query languages and writing the queries in SQL is usually much easier than coding the same queries in a general purpose programming language. However, a database programmer must have access to the general purpose programming languages for at least two reasons. Why? What are the two reasons? Not all the queries can be expressed in the SQL. Since SQL does not provide the full expressive power of a general purpose language, that is there exists queries that can be expressed in a language and that language will be occupied, that language will be used as a backup medium or as a storage that can be expressed with the, with the, with the full specification how it is used with the general purpose registers, with the general purpose language. And there also exists some queries that are also available for the database. What type of database? That may be a procedural language, that may be a non-procedural language. That depends on the requirement of the users. So to write such queries, we can embed the SQL within more powerful language that is known as the programming language that may be SQL, uh, that may be a Java, that may be any language. So to, to write such queries, we can embed the SQL within a more, more, more powerful language that can be used. The next is non addictive or non non declarative statements or actions such as printing a report, interacting with the users or sending the results of a query to a graphical user interface that cannot be done from within the SQL. So this can be performed within the SQL, this cannot be performed within the SQL. That that may be a reason why why it is used with the SQL, why 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 there is the data that is required within the SQL. So there are two approaches to access the SQL from a general purpose programming language. One is the dynamic SQL, one is the embedded SQL. Dynamic means uh, that is using with a general purpose program that connect that can connect to and communicate with a database server that is using the collection of the functions for procedural languages or the methods for the object oriented languages. Uh, and the dynamic SQL also allows the program to construct an SQL query as a character string 
at runtime and submit the query then retrieve the result into the program variable that is used with the tuple at the same time and the dynamic SQL components of SQL also allows the program to construct or submit SQL queries at runtime. In this chapter we are looking forward for a JDBC yeah JDBC and the ODBC JDBC <coughs> Yeah. Java database connectivity and open database connectivity. So JDBC is an application interface for the Java language. ODBC is an application program interface developed for the C language and subsequently extended to other languages also like C++, C Sharp. But JDBC is specific for the Java language. The next is embedded SQL. So like dynamic SQL, embedded SQL also provides a means by which a program can interact with the database servers. However, under embedding or embedded the SQL, the SQL statements are also identified at the compile type using a preprocessor. And this preprocessor submits the SQL statement to the database system for the pre-compilation and the optimization. Then it replaces the SQL statement in an application program with the appropriate code, whatever the code, whatever the function code, before invoking the programming language or compiler. And major challenge in mixing the SQL with the general purpose language is mismatch in the ways these languages that manipulates them. So a major challenge in mixing the SQL is using the general purpose is the mismatch in the ways these languages manipulate the data. And in SQL, the primary type of the data is a relation. SQL statements also operates on a relation and therefore the re relations are the result. And the programming languages normally operates on a variable at the same time and those variables correspond roughly to the value of the attribute. So this operates on a variable. The, the variable correspond to the value of an attribute in a tuple and integrating these type of languages into single application also requires providing a mechanism to return to the result of the query so that the program can handle each and every query it does not fail. So first part is the JDBC that defines an application program interface API that Java program can use to connect to the database servers. And the JDBC was, yeah. So this provides the Java program by using the open connection keyword. This is one of the example, just see it. So public static void JDBC example, string user ID, string password. Then there's a tribe log, class for name, Oracle, JDBC driver, Oracle driver, connection con, driver manager dot connection, get connection. Then JDBC Oracle thin DBY or EDU 1521, new DB. Then user ID and the password. The next is statement stmt cone dot create statement then there's a tribe log stmt execute update insert into the instructor values now these are the few values that is available within the fields then came physics then system dot out dot printl and cannot insert or could not insert the top one. then result set r set stmt dot execute query Select department name every salary from instructor that is grouped by the department name. While R set dot next, yeah, it is using the while function, a while loop. Uh, while R set dot next, system dot out dot print ln, R set dot get string department name, then R set dot get plot to. Then STM tick dot close, connection dot close. This is the try blog, and then there is the cache blog, this is the cache exception SQLE, then system dot out dot print ln exception SQLE. This is one of the example of the JDBC code. So this is an abbreviation for the Java, uh, Java database connectivity, but the full form is no longer used. 
So Java program must import the java.sql.string which contains the interface definitions for the functionality provided by the JDBC. Next is connecting to the database. How to connect to the database with a Java program? So first step in accessing the database from a Java program is to open a connection to the database. So first step is to open a connection and this step is required to select which database to use. For example, an instance of Oracle running on your machine then PostgreSQL, the database running on another machine. Only after opening a connection, then a Java. In Java program executes SQL statements. And this connection is opened using the get connection method of the driver manager class. And this method takes three arguments. First one is get connection call, that is a string that specifies the URL or machine name where the server runs along which or along with possibly some areas or other information such as a protocol to be used to communicate with the database. Then port number that the database system uses for the communication and the specific database for the server to be used. And note that JDBC specifies only the API that is application programming interface not the communication protocol. And when you talk about the JDBC driver, that may support some multiple protocol at the same time. And that means at the same time, it can support the FTP, SMTP, MIME. And we must specify one supported by both the database and the driver. So the protocol details are the vendor specific. Then the second parameter to get connection is a database user identifier, which is a string. Then third parameter is a password that is also a string that is used to specify a password within the JDBC code that presents a security risk if it in unauthorized person access your Java code. And in our example in the figure we have created a connection object whose handle is a cone. And each database product that support is, uh, supports the JDBC that also provides a JDBC driver that must be dynamically loaded in order to access what are the Java database from the Java. And in fact, when we load the driver, that must be done first before connecting to the database. This is done by using or by invoking class.phone name with one argument specifying a concrete class implementing the Java.sql. Uh, the actual protocol that is used to exchange the information with the database that depends on the driver that is defined by the JDBC. But the main concern is that there are multiple parts of the get connection. So which version, which connection you are using for the get connection method, according to that the protocol will be used. It is automatically assigned by the database. And a, sub, a suitable protocol must be chosen depending on what protocol the database you are connecting to uh, supports. And for example, when opening a connection with a database, the string JDBC Oracle thin specifies a particular protocol supported by the Oracle. That means it's a JDBC of the Oracle type and there is a thin. The next is shipping SQL statement to the database users. So once a database connection is open, so the program can use it to send the SQL statements to the database system for execution. And that is done by an instance of the class statement. And this statement object is not the SQL statement itself, but rather it is an object 
that allows the Java program to invoke methods that ships an SQL statement with an argument for execution by the database system. This is the statement handle that is the STMT on the connection call. And to execute a statement, we must invoke either the execute query method or the execute update method. That depending on whether the SQL statement is a query that is written such as result set or non-query statement such as update, insert, delete, create table. So as per this example, it is using the stmd.execute update expression that executes an update statement that is going to be inserted in the instructor relation. And that also returns an integer giving the number of the tuples inserted, updated or deleted. And for the, and for the GDL statement, the return value is zero. Then try, catch, that construct permit us to catch any exceptions that arises when JDBC calls are made and prints an appropriate message to the user. Uh, next is retrieving the result of a query. by using the uh, boolean expression, by using the get string, by using the get float and the argument to various get methods that can either be an attribute name, name specified by a string or an integer indicating the position of the desired attribute within a tuple. Now let's see. This is one of the example given over here. We are using the cache block exception cell. We are using the rset.next over here. And the statement and connection are both closed at the end of the Java program. Note that it is very important to close the connection between because there is a limit imposed on the number of the connection to the database. Unclosed connection may, may cause that, that limit to be ex exceeded and if this this happens, the application cannot open any, any more connection to the database. And next is the prepared statement PSTMT, con dot prepare statement, insert into instructor values, then PSTMT gets set string 18877 then PSTMT set string to Perry, then STMT set string 3 final, then 4125000, then executes update string 188878, then execute update. The next one is a prepared statement. That is also a method of the connection class submits an SQL query for the compilation. And it returns an execution, it returns an object of the class prepared statement. That also allows for more efficient execution in the cases when the same query can be compiled once and then run multiple times with different parameter values. And there is even more significant advantage to the prepared statement that makes a preferred method of executing the SQL queries. Why? Because uh, it is syntactically correct or incorrect unless we take the extra care in checking the input and the set string method doing this for us automatically and inserts the needed escape characters to ensure the syntactic correctness. This is one of the example insert into instructor values an ID name department name and the balance and whatever the query that is executed directly using the execute query method of a statement. Uh, then using the single quotes in the ID or the name field, then query the string that have a syntax value that is also quite possible for the instructor name that may have a quotation marks in the same, that is the O entry for example. So select star from instructor where name plus 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 then 